Alhamdulillah, we're blessed to be back in uh, performing Juma prayer at our mosque. Even though it's outside, it's still sitting at the mosque. May Allah open the, the masajid and may Allah opens the hearts of the believers to His love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created the human being, He embedded in the human being the potential, the potential of becoming Al Insan Al Kamil. This to reach your that level that you take your humanity, your insaniyah, to the level of perfection. And every human being has that potential to become what we call in our tradition a wali or a saint. And if you have met someone like that, and if you get a chance to meet someone, a true wali of Allah, a saint of God, they change your life with just one nada, with just one glance. They change your life just being in their gathering. This is the nature of the people that, that they abandon their nafs and their desires and their wants and all they become, they become souls. And there are people like that in the history of Islam and there are people like that until the end of time. One of the people Mawlana Rumi met was Shamsuddin Tabriz. Shamsuddin Tabriz was a man who was reached that level of perfection, of sainthood. And when he met him, Rumi said, what did you do to me? He said, what did you do to me? You flipped me upside down. He said, no, my friend, you've been living your life upside down all your life. You've been living an upside down life your entire existence. I just turned you right side up. And it's stay like this, you'll be fine. And it changed his life forever, that man that came into his life, changed Mawlana Rumi's life forever, that we mention him now 800 years later in Pleasanton, California. A man who was born in Afghanistan and died in Konya. But all of the awliya, they don't even reach the house of the prophets because the prophets are another level. They are infallible. And Allah sends down prophets who are perfect human beings. And amongst the prophets, you have the Ulil Adam, and amongst them, you have our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on the 12th of Rabi al Awal, in an hour before Fajr, the earth shouted towards the heaven and said, Who's better now? Because the earth is dunya, means the lowest of God's creation. That's what the dunya meant. And it was until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. And we know by Ijma. Of all every scholar, the greatest place, the most sacred place, the most beautiful place, the highest place in all of God's creation is the Rawda Sharif. Is the place where the Prophet ﷺ is buried in Medina Munawwara. There's nothing higher than that. It's higher than the Arsh, the Kursi, all of Samawat and heavens and the earth, everything. There's nothing higher than that. And that is our Prophet Sallallahu his maqam, that he came in and he put things in order. Everything was upside down and he turned it right side up because he was an adib. He came with adab and adab is to put things in their proper perspective, in their proper places. Everything he put in, in the right place. And this is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who brought dead hearts to life with kalibutu la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. On the 12th of Rabi al Awal, this is the day that we are celebrating his birth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in all of existence, was celebrating his birth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He also died on that day. He, he was born on a Monday, the 12th of Rabi al Awal. He died on the same day, on Monday, the 12th of Rabi al Awal. Right? He received revelation on Monday as well. It's a blessed day, Monday. But when he died on Monday, he, he actually, you know, he got sick on Thursday and he, and he couldn't lead the prayer and said Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. And Abu Bakr Sadiq is the only companion that never missed a unit of prayer behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Never missed a unit of prayer behind everybody else missed it except him. The three days of the Prophet, he, he migrated, went to Ghar Hira. It was only Abu Bakr and him. There was nobody there. Nobody. Everybody was either migrated before or after. The 12 days they were traveling, it was him. And that's Abu Bakr's maqam. But the Prophet ﷺ died on Monday. 
And when Israel came, he said, you came to visit or take the soul? He said, both. And the Prophet وسلم, this is in the Kashf al-Asrar, in the commentary of the Quran by Abdullah al-Ansari, Maybudi's commentary. He said, where's my friend? Jibreel, 23 years of friendship with Jibreel that would come almost every day to visit the Prophet وسلم, and bring revelation. Jibreel, I mean, he said Jibreel is in the seventh heaven and all of the angels are giving to Aziah condolences to him because of your departure. And Jibreel came immediately to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Oh my friend, give me some good news. I want to hear some good news from you. And Jibreel said, Oh Messenger of Allah, all of the angels are lined up from here, from Medina Munawwara, all the way to the seventh heaven with Rahan and with flowers and with beauty, just waiting for your soul to reach them so they can look at you with your beautiful soul, so they can see you. The whole, all of the angels, an untold number of angels. He said, the generosity of Allah is amazing with me. But give, that's not what I'm asking for. Give me some good news. He said, oh, messenger of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has closed the doors of fire, has opened the doors of, of paradise for you. All of paradise is ready and ripe for you. The rivers are flowing, the, the flowers are blooming. Everything is ready for you. He said, O oh, Jibreel, generosity of Allah is amazing, but give me some good news. He said, Allah says, you will be the first to be raised amongst humanity. You will be the first to make shafa'ah. You will, be, uh, your shafa will be the first to be accepted on that day of judgment. He said, oh Jibreel, give me some good news. The generosity of Allah is amazing, but give me some good news. He said, Ya Rasulullah, what better news than this? What better news than this you want to hear? And you know what the Prophet said? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, tell me about my ummah. I want to know about my ummah, the state of my ummah. Bunch of fuqara, du'aba, weak people who are trying their best to implement the sharia, who are trying their best to be a good Muslim. But they're weak. Tell me about their state. I want to know about them. I want to know what's going to happen to them on the day of judgment. This is a man on his deathbed and he's thinking about us. And Jibreel says that Allah says that no one, no prophet, no other ummah will enter paradise until you and your ummah enter paradise. And he said, Al -an, I'm ready now. Ready now. You can take my soul now. This is our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why we celebrate him. And this is why we love him. Because he has done so much for us in the dunya. On his last breath, he's thinking about us. On the best night of his life, when it was Isra and Miraj, what did he say to Allah? Ya Allah, what am I going to take back to my ummah? Not to my wife, not to my children, not to my sahabas. No, to my ummah. On his deathbed, he's thinking about, what about my ummah? What about my ummah? I'm worried about them. He's worried about us. He's worried about us. That Allah will forgive us or not. This is our prophet. And this is why we should love him. He is worthy of falling in love with him. Well, if there's anyone worthy of falling in love is him because Allah has chosen him, has chosen him as Habibullah, as his beloved. If Allah has chosen him as Habibullah, shouldn't we have him as our beloved? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah put his love in our hearts, in our hearts of our families, in our community. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ونحن نعلم الله من أنفسنا حسن الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله The love of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is foundational to our religion is foundational to our devotion is foundational to our well-being is foundational to our success is foundational to a happy life We have, some of us have diverted from that. And all of these 
stories of our prophet have become an abstract concept. It's not a reality that we live anymore. Most of our children, they don't have connection with the Prophet like our parents did. We don't have connection like our parents and our grandparents. And we're losing that grip. And if we lose that grip, we lose everything. We lose everything. And the love of the Prophet uh, Sayyidina Maymuna radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet who outlived all of the wives, uh, according to one narration, she was the last of the wives to die. She died in year 61. She was eight, over 80 years old when she died. The, she asked on the last days of our lives, she said, I want to move to this place. It's 10 miles outside of Mecca, in the middle of nowhere. So they said, why do you want to go? They said, just, I just want to move there and stay there. So they moved her and she stayed there and she died there and she's buried there. And many of the, uh, the people don't know where she's buried, unfortunately. We go, when I go to Umrah every time, we visit her first before we perform at Umrah. And it's, in the, it's in, on, the, on the middle, on the side of the road. No signs or anything, unfortunately. But anyways, and I ask her, why do you want to live here in the middle of the, nowhere? And she said, because this is the place where I spend the first night with the Prophet So I want to die in here. Now that's love, because she had wafa. She had wafa with the Prophet And if you want success, if you want dunya, if you want akhirah, whatever you want, wallahi, if you're a Muslim, you have to have wafa with the Prophet and you will get everything. You will get everything. Allah will give you because you have wafa with his beloved. Iqbal said, Ki Muhammad se wafa tuni to hum te rehe. Ye jaha cheez hai kya, law wo qalam te rehe. You have, be faithful to my Prophet, be faithful to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do you want? You want the dunya? You want success? You want to rule the world? Forget about those. I give you the pen and the tablet, write your own destiny. What do you want? I give you everything. But we have to be real lovers of the Prophet ﷺ. And this day, these days come every year to remind us who he was and what is our responsibility towards the Prophet ﷺ. To love him, to know him is to love him, and to love him is to know him. We need to read the Seerah, we need to read the Shema'il, we need to connect with our Prophet ﷺ and fill our heart with his love, with his stories. We need to tell our children and our family his stories of our Prophet That is a living love. It's not a dead love, it's a living love. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah put that love in our hearts, in the hearts of our family, in the hearts of our community, inshallah. Inna alhamdulillah, ma'amudu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru wa na'audu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdi Allah falamudillala man yudhul falahadi ala وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى بشيرا ونذيرا قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله النبي وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحمه المهدي والمهدي أبو بكر والأحبة أشهد أن في أمر الله أحمد وأصدقه حيا الرحمن وأخوة وفاة من سيدنا